Come on into the library, it's a place where I love to be. Look in a book, here's a story for you. Who makes stories when the day is through? Who makes stories when the day is through? Story makers, story makers, working through the night till the rising sun. Story makers, story makers, stories are fabulous, stories are fun. Milton Wordsworth. Jackson. Working through the night till the rising sun Story makers, story makers Stories are fabulous, stories are fun Come and be a story Midnight. Hello. Has everybody gone? The sun is down, the stars are bright. Story makers come out at night. Milton Wordsworth, story maker and magical maestro, at your service. You know, I was listening today and some of the children said they were going to a fancy dress party. Oh, fancy dress. Who is that when people wear their fanciest clothes? No, Jackson. It's a party where you dress up as someone else. That's right. Mm. Well done, Jelly. Oh, oh, oh. Can we have a fancy dress party? Oh, yeah. I'm sure that could be arranged. Oh. There you are. Oh, wow. oh. <laughs> can you guess who they are? Oh, well, Jelly's got a beautiful dress and a tiara. I'm a princess. Uh, what about Jackson? Well, he's got a, a stripy shirt uh, and a funny hat that I recognise. Oh, it's easy. I'm a pirate. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Oh. A life on the ocean wave. Oh, must go. I've got treasure to find. OK. Well, I've got a splendidious idea. Perhaps you'd like to hear it, Jelly. Oh, I'd love to. What say we make a dressing up story? Perhaps you'd like to help us get the machine going. Mm. You do it like this. Imagine, 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 imagine a, a story. story. It's a playbook. Tilly's dressing up day. Tilly was bored with her everyday clothes. She found them as dull as could be. She thought jumpers and skirts and t-shirts and trousers aren't very exciting for me. So Tilly's mum smiled and said, Why don't you look beside your bed? Your dressing up box is standing there. It's full of special things to wear. So Tilly hugged her mummy tight and rushed upstairs with great delight. But before Tilly had her dressing up time, she needed to say her special rhyme. Magic box by my bed, show me what to wear instead. The lid opened, what could she see? What would the magic box choose her to be? Tilly peered inside and smiled with pleasure. The magic box had offered her treasure. She lifted a crown out very lightly, a glittery crown that shined so brightly. Tilly delved inside the box once more, and a cape was the next thing she saw. I'll be a princess, she said with a twirl. This makes me such a pretty girl. She gazed and gazed into the mirror and her eye caught something all of a shimmer. For in the box lay a sparkling wand, then a tutu white and airy. With these satin shoes and ribbons of pink, I can be a fairy. But then she thought, I might freeze with clothes as thin and cold as these. I need things that are warm and fluffy. But will Mummy call me Scruffy? I know what to wear, said Tilly. Perhaps something bright and really silly. I'll be a clown with a shiny red nose. 
a curly green wig and big shoes on my toes. But then Tilly said, I can't wear this. It makes my nose hurt and itch. So back in the box, Tilly rummaged and pondered. She thought and thought and her mind wandered. A spotty dress and stripes on my tights. Does this go together? I think what I need to finish it off is my hat with a special feather. Tilly smiled and jumped with glee. Mummy, she cried, come and see me. Tilly, you look lovely, Mummy said. But now I think it's time for bed. She was a bit like a model girl. Can we have a story about being a model? I don't see why not, my little cherub. We are the story makers after all. <laughs> And, and we could use this pretty rainbow to put in the story machine to make a story about colourful clothes. Perfect. Now for the magical ingredient. Yes, imagination. Hmm. Are you ready? Ima imagine, 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 imagine a story. Story. Blue Cow Becomes a Model In a field not far away is a herd of cows grazing quietly. One of the cows is most unusual. Blue Cow wonders, wonders about the big world beyond her field. One day, Blue Cow was munching grass when an advert showing beautiful and colourful clothes blew into the field. I wonder what it would be like to wear clothes like that. She's off again, said the other cows. So Blue Cow caught the bus that stops beside her field. I'd like a return ticket to a fashion show, please. There you go, madam. Hold very tight. And they set off for a very fashionable place. And then they arrived. When Blue Cow got off the bus, she could hardly believe her eyes. She saw rows and rows of beautiful clothes and hats and shoes and coats and gloves. And all around her, people were trying on the clothes. Suddenly, Blue Cow heard a cry. Mamma mia, it's a disaster! What's wrong? said Blue Cow. I'm Giorgio Ciocci, the designer. The famous catwalk model Meow Me Candle cannot come today. I need another model. Ooh, can I help? said Blue Cow. Giorgio Ciocci looked at Blue Cow carefully and then smiled and said, You are perfect and you are blue. Wonderful. Blue is the only colour we do not have. Seconds later, Blue Cow's nails were painted. Her face was made up and her horns were polished. Then Blue Cow was dressed in red socks, an orange scarf, yellow feathers, green gloves, a purple skirt and an amazing hat. Georgia looked at Blue Cow and said, Oh, oh, Blue Cow, you are now every colour of the rainbow. Blue Cow looked at herself in the mirror. Is that really me? she said. She hardly recognised herself. Georgia said, Blue Cow, go out onto the catwalk, just a cow, but come back a star. Blue Cow stepped onto the catwalk. The people cheered and clapped. Photographers snapped lots of pictures. This way, Blue Cow, small for the camera, lovely. Blue Cow was very, very happy. After the show, the clothes were put back on the rails and the makeup was taken off. Oh, oh, thank you, Blue Cow. Come back whenever you want to be a model again, said Georgia. Oh, thank you, said Blue Cow. Maybe I will. Bye. <laughs> Milton, Milton, I I've made you a fancy dress costume. Wow, thank you. <laughs> What is it? It's a jelly design. Oh, my fancy dress is a jellyfish. That's right. <laughs> <Yeah. Yeah. laughs> oh. oh, talented one. Mm -hmm. um, could I make a suggestion? Of course. Could we use this to make a story? Oh, yes. That's great. <laughs>
Imagine, imagine, imagine a story. It's a barnacle rock story. It's called the Helmet Crab. Once upon a tide at Barnacle Rock, the seahorse baby woke up early. Rise and shine, everyone under the sea. Dad, I want to play now. I'm not sleepy. It's too early. Groaned Harry. Stay in the pouch. He started to snore. The seahorse baby was feeling naughty, so she floated out of the pouch. She hadn't gone far when she found a big cave to explore inside. The cave seemed to have an open window, which was very strange. I'm going to play forts in here, cried the seahorse baby. But suddenly, the window closed with a snap, and the seahorse baby was trapped inside. Later, Harry the seahorse woke up. Out you come, Littley! He yawned. When Littley didn't appear, he looked in the pouch. Where is she, Littley? Littley! What's up, Harry? Said Ellie, appearing from amongst the seaweed. Littley has gone. I can't find her anywhere. Cried Harry. Have you seen her barnacles? Asked Ellie. No, we've only just woken up. Chimed the barnacles. Maybe Electra has seen her. No, no, I haven't seen her anywhere. Sparked Electra. I've just woken up too. What's that? Harry spotted the strange, shiny object on the seabed. Ellie looked puzzled. Is it some sort of crab? Wait a minute, I can hear something," said Harry. A muffled cry came from the object. It's Littley! cried Harry. What's up? Popper Clam appeared from under the sand. It looks like Littley is trapped in the belly of a giant crab. Ellie wailed. Ha! Huh. Popper Clam guffawed. That's no crab. It's a. Uh... Now let me think. It's a uh... <laughs> helmet for one of those motorcycles. <laughs> the people up top put helmets on their heads so that if they fall off their bikes, it don't. Hurt so much. But how do we open it? Cried Harry. My little is trapped in there. Well, we'll need quite a strong fish for this. Hold on a minute. Gruff. What's all the kerfuffle? Grumbled Gruff. Littley is trapped, and you're the strongest fish. We need all your help. Said Papa Clam. With one mighty nose shove, Gruff pushed open the helmet, and the seahorse baby popped out. Thank you, Gruff. She sighed. You mustn't go up without me," said Harry. "You're too little." Sorry, Dad," she whispered. <laughs> oh, we finished that story just in time for all the story makers and princesses and the pirates <laughs> hidden away. Yeah. The dawn is upon us. The morning is nigh. We've made our stories, and we bid you. Goodbye. Story makers, story makers, working through the night till the rising sun. Story makers, story makers, stories are fabulous. Stories are happy. Bye, story makers. See you again soon.